Hello there. Welcome to Healthy Cooking with your friendly Italians. I'm Jim Barrow. And I'm Marilyn Barrow. And we're here to celebrate Columbus Day, which was yesterday. Well, we're a little late, but that's oh, okay. But we, it's in our hearts. We, yeah, we're Italian. It's a whole we're gonna, week, right. yes. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be talking about the St. Anthony Festival, which I think the food was as good as it's yes, ever been. Yes, it was. We were up there on uh, Saturday night. It was gonna, fun. We're going to talk about a, a restaurant that we ate in New York City, city called Italy. And I'm going to talk about my grandfather, uh, Raymond Del Papa, who uh, was the first Italian lit that moved to uh, Geneva, New York. Right. Uh, we're going to talk about Ellis Island. I found my mother's cookbook that is shredding it so old, <laughs> but I've got some recipes uh, out of there, and we're going to do those. So we've got a full a full gamut of things to cover, right, Marilyn? We certainly do. All right, let's start with uh, oh, St. Anthony Festival. It was it was really nice. We weren't able to get up there till Saturday night. Yeah. Uh, you got you know it was a little bit more chilly than Labor Day weekend, but. Um, and I don't think, well, so we went early. I'm mm -hmm. not sure the crowds. The music was great. The food was great. We had pasta vajoli. We had the pizza frit. And the pizza frit, I ate it and I didn't get agita. That's you a surprise. Know what is, it, right? Surprise. We had the sausage and peppers. Uh, right. And that uh, was wonderful. And the we people that had gizzards said they were good. And we actually yeah. had a chocolate cannoli yeah. filled with regatta, which we shared everything. Right. So but we, I think uh, I still have to lose weight. <laughs> so. <laughs> you, you've been on that all long. Yeah, even though we shared it all. <laughs> right. But I commend the committee for uh, a mm -hmm. job job well done. Uh, and they finally got it in. They perse persevered. So that was good. Uh, Marilyn, uh, we also went to New York City. We did. We got to visit. A cousin of mine came in from Phoenix, and she wanted to travel around. And we stayed in Jersey City, where our son and daughter-in-law live. And we had a very good time. We went out to Ellis Island, where my father and my grandfather came in. And to where this country. all my grandparents all, and all came her from. Came, came through. And uh, it was it it was it, it was emotional. It's been certain. closed for a couple of years because of Sandy, and a lot of their displays are still being repaired because that was a big close. The yeah. crowds are incredible. The foreign visitors are incredible. And of course, you still have to go through security to get to Ellis Island. It is not an easy thing to do. We did take the ferry from over in New Jersey, but it doesn't make any difference how you get there. You still have to well, go Maryland, through security. The, yeah, but the the crowds coming from the Jersey side by ferry versus the New York side are a lot less. Oh, yes, so. because you can also take a ferry from Battery Park up to Ellis Island in the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty area is really, really full. So is Ellis Island, uh, but they've done a absolute. They've done a very good job. You can now rent. Uh, you, they give you these um, micro something that you punch in a number, and you can listen to what they have to say. So you have a guided tour on your own time. And you can also go to this room and check your heritage. Yes. I, and they will see if when your grandfather right. or great grandfather or great great grandfather came through. We I don't know how far back it we goes. We didn't quite do it because the crowds were pretty. But big. we have, we can do it through. Uh, or we can do it yeah. through ancestry.com or. Uh, so that that was really nice. And then let's tell them about the restaurant we ate at. Well, another favorite place of ours, and and our cousins really did want to eat, is a place called Italy, and it's owned by. Mario Batali and Lydia Bastianich and her son Joe Bastianich. And it's really a happening. It's in the flat, Flatiron District. Which is about 23rd, 3rd, uh, 23rd and 24th it, yeah. and, uh, and 5th Avenue. And it really is an emporium. It has at least five restaurants. We were fortunate to go to their new restaurant that's on the roof uh, rooftop called Birira. And they make their own beer. It's a brewery. They uh, do a lot bit more than that. But they do a lot more <laughs> than that. Uh, as you walk up the last flight, it, you can it, you have to walk up some stairs. On each stair is a saying in Italian. We got there. The food was incredible. At the table not too far from us was Leon Panetta, and the Secret oh, Service were there. We're sitting there with <laughs> Leon Panetta and the Secret the, Service. The, the roof 
it, on a good day can slide back as it would be in a stadium and your views of all the skyline of New York City. You just look up and there's all the skyline. The beers were incredible. The food was, I, every dish, we shared some dishes. The cheese and honey and hazelnuts yeah, were and incredible. And Maryland, we were on the cutting edge. The cheese and honey I gave you. You had given it the week before from right, the farm the to table out in the So we're West right on Coast. top of it, baby. So we had some very good food. It was a great fun. So we were so impressed, and it, it, the downstairs, there's five restaurants downstairs. It all depends on which area you go to. Um, you can have fresh pasta, you can do, you can do all kinds, a, of, things. All kinds of things. And then you can also buy sausages and cheeses they and even had, coffees and just go, they, anything Italian they got. They even had a display <clears throat> of uh, some Italian artifacts. I didn't quite do that. So uh, k my cousin Kim and I decided that, well, what we were going to do for dinner is we were just going to go to the Emporium and buy dinner. So we did that. Um, it was good. And Jim and Tony decided to sit in the park and watch people while we went shopping. I'm telling you, to shop here is a, another whole experience because there's at least 15 different languages as people are going through. And it gets very crowded. You get there a little bit before noon and you're okay. Right. If you're there about two or three in the afternoon, it is a zoo. And watching people in New York is one of the my greatest pastimes. To sit in a park and watch all these different people, colors, uh, sizes go by you is fantastic. You just can't even imagine all the right. food. And, the, and they make a good share of it, they make. All right, it's really good. You should go there. Let's give them a recipe. All right, I think that's a good idea. Uh, I, uh, I told you I found this cookbook of my mother's, and 99% uh, uh, of it uh, was was desserts. And she liked to uh, make desserts that had some kind of booze in it. I never liked, liked the ones that had the booze in it. I could drink the booze, but I didn't like the booze in it. But she, was, she made pineapple upside down cake that I could eat the whole thing when she made it. And she scratched down the, the recipe for a pineapple upside down cake. And I want to share that with you. It is very good. It's light. The only problem you have with it when you flip it over is you got to be very careful that the whole thing uh, settles on the bottom so that you can pull the pan up on top. And you're going to take some egg yolks. You're going to take, this is not uh, a recipe for the Weight Watchers, let me tell you. But it's oh so good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're going to mix together some uh, egg yolks and, uh, and some white sugar, and you're going to put some zest and lemon in it, and you're going you're gonna to mix that up until it becomes somewhat, the sugar is kinda, uh, has sort of dissipated a bit. Uh, fold in some flour and salt. Then in another bowl, you're going to uh, put some butter, vanilla, brown sugar, and get some egg whites and, uh, and beat them up are, stiff. Yes, they have to be stiffly beaten. And then you yes. carefully fold that together. Take your pan and put on the, uh, on the bottom of the pan some, some brown sugar. Coat it with some butter and some brown sugar. And then put your open up a can of pineapples, canned pineapples, the rings. Put them down and pour this over the top. And you put it in the oven and cook it. And then you, when you take it out, you, you let it set for a little bit. You can't let it set too long because it will start to crystallize. And then turn it over. Let it set some more, and lo and behold, the whole thing will come out. And here are these wonderful caramelized uh, pineapples on top. You put a put a, a cherry, a Marciano cherry in it, and let me tell you something: you died and gone to heaven. It's that is one thing my husband did want me to learn to make, and she did uh, when we were first married. I this desserts were never my big thing. Almost as good as mom. Uh, almost. But I'm not a baker. <laughs> Either am I. The other question he had, he opened this book and he said, Marilyn, why is there only desserts? I said, well, your mother liked desserts. But I said, you forget that Italian people did not cook by recipes. They cooked by feel. Right. There was no recipe for pasta sauce. There was no recipe for uh, steak a la pizzola. There was no recipes. They made them veal, uh, you know, veal cutlets. 
they just knew how to make them. They learned at the uh, the knee of their mothers or grandmothers. She uh, she used to make uh, make rum balls. And she would invite all, invite all of the nuns over to the house. Around Christmas. She made them at Christmas. And the nuns would sit there and have coffee and eat these rum balls. And then she'd have to get a car to take them home because she got them all a little hoo-hoo on them. But, uh, <laughs> but she also used to make fruitcakes. And she uh, put them in a tin and she'd wrap them in cheesecloth and pour brandy yes. over Yes. And then I found out about this. And I would go downstairs, open up the tin take the, the all of the brandy that it accumulated in about pouring a glass and drink it. And she couldn't understand why this fruitcake was, was taking so much. absorbing all this, this brandy. Uh, so, anyways. Well, that's what happens when you have a son. All right. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about someone very, very dear to my heart, my grandfather, Raymond Del Papa, a great man, first Italian uh, that uh, came into Geneva. Uh, he was uh, considered a patron for the Italian people. He actually was the one that got Torrey Park started. Uh, he would go over to Italy uh, every year and talk to his paisans and say, you, you come with me to Geneva, New York. I'll pay your way over. I will get you a job on the railroad. I will have a, some place for you to yeah, live. Didn't he work for the railroad with his brother in, Bingham, in the southern his cousin. Camp? Cousin yeah. in the southern tier first right. before he came to Geneva. And he he actually uh, designed the plow that they used to uh, get rid of the snow on the on the railroad. Okay. So and they and and they would they would come over and uh, he uh, he uh, he built a uh, a house which was part of Torrey Park. A boarding Park. house. A boarding basically, house. Basically. He put in a bakery. He had uh, a, a place. Uh, a bar. Mm -hmm. He had it all covered for for sure. the people that came came in, and uh, the the Tory Park area of the where the uh, Prandies is and Club well, eighty six. Well, it's called Tory Park now. Right. The restaurant. Right. And Club eighty six is. And my grandfather lived right across the street from the from the uh, railroad station. And uh, it, it it was it was quite a scene. And we're going to get into a little bit more of 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 that of what I remember. Uh, about uh, well, Jim was one of the younger grandchildren that right, he had. Right, right. But uh, before we do, why don't why don't we give him another recipe? All right. A yeah. As is usual with the <clears throat> with immigrants, whether it's Italian or whatever, you know the money was a little tight when they first came over, and they made sure everything they weren't going to throw anything you away. You never threw anything out. So if yes. you had any uh, uh, meat left over. Uh, they would make it into croquettes. I mean, often on Sundays they would try to be special and have a roast. So you could very well have a roast chicken. Now, with that roast chicken, you're going to end up with some leftover chicken meat. Well, so mom would take it, this uh, this uh, this chicken meat, or it could be anything else too, uh, and mix in with it some ground almonds, egg yolks, curry, lemon juice or lime juice some salt and paprika and celery salt and make it into patties and saute it, uh, cover it with some breadcrumbs and saute it. And she would serve it with chutney. It isn't very Italian, but she, uh, she had expanded That's what she that. made, but you have to put it in egg too, egg and then into. You gotta yeah, put the egg, egg first, first and, and then and the breadcrumbs. Uh, easy recipe to do if you got leftovers. So you right. might. And you uh, can use anything. Yeah. So let's, let's get back to my great my grandfather. Uh, he uh, actually belonged to the fascist party and uh, he would go over every year to, to get more Italians uh, to come with him into the, United, into the United States and he would have dinner with Mussolini and when he did this the fascist party that there was in Geneva <coughs> would have a, a, a bon voyage dinner at the Seneca Hotel and, uh, and, w and cheer him on when he went over over to Italy. Now yeah. we think very badly of Mussolini and we should because of World War II but for the Italians at that time he did some great things. First of all Italy was all city-states. Second of all the education was terrible and their economic uh, uh, their economics was terrible. It was a very poor place to live and it was hard to even make a living of any sort. Yeah. Somehow he industrialized it 
he got uh, he uh, made everyone uh, uh, the infrastructure and the education. Uh, kids, uh, um, children in in uh, Sicily didn't even go to school. So then he provided education, and he really helped the Italian people. Now he certainly didn't turn out particularly well for Italy, but during the time he was in office. And uh, in power, shall we say, it's more power. He did some wonderful things for Italy. You, you go to Italy, I uh, go to Sicily today, and the Sicilians will and they'll will still tell, tell you, you about what a that, that what he a changed good he their did. lives. Right. Yes. So he would go on over, and he would eat with Mussolini, and then he would bring some Italians back, and they would come back, and and he, they they were being paid for work on the railroad six dollars a week. Now my grandfather got. It didn't go to them. It went directly to him, and he took three dollars and fifty cents off the top to cover all the expenses for the food and the and the uh, where they stayed and the and, and the trip the, over. And the trip over, yes. And, and the rent, uh, they yes. gave they gave him the rest, and they they loved him. Uh, he was their patron, and uh, on Saturday morning the Italians would did not trust to put the money in the, the bank. banks. But they trusted my grandfather, and they would bring the money on Saturday morning. I remember, I was just a little kid, and he used to sit in a throne-like chair, and they would come in and they would kneel down and kiss his ring, like the Pope, Del Papa, uh, and mm. they would give him uh, their money, and he would put it in the this big safe, and they would keep it in there for safekeeping. I don't, I'm sure he didn't pay any interest on it, but it was they felt but very, they, at least very they good felt about it, was it. Safe. and uh, they uh, they thought a lot of him. And one of my grandfather's favorite dishes was a steak a la pizziola, and I enjoyed it too. You don't see it too much anymore. I, I never heard of it till I married you, but that's okay. <laughs> see all the, news, all the things you learned. <laughs> <laughs> we so, never had it. <laughs> I, I want to talk to you about uh, steak a la pizziola. It's an easy dish to, to make. You're going to take a strip steak, and uh, you're uh, going to season it, mm. and you're going to make a, uh, a, a sauce out of garlic, tomatoes, oregano, and onion. You're gonna saute it in on the side, and you're gonna take your steak and put it on a grill, either indoor or outdoor, and just, you wanna sear the outside, one minute on each side. Then uh, take your sauce, pour that over the top, and cook it for about two minutes. Now that's, what's gonna come out is rare. Now if you wanna, if you want to, uh, have, have it a medium or well done, you cook it like, God forbid you eat, eat it well done, but it's available. And the easiest way to tell how a steak is rare, medium, or well done is by taking your hand and, and closing it, and but not putting pressure on it, and touch between your, right, right over, you can't see it, but right between the thumb and forefinger, and you feel that, and the way that feels is rare. If you want it medium, you bring your thumb over, not squeeze it, and you feel that's medium. If you want it well done, you clench your fist and press right there, and that's well done. So that's how you tell. And and it's a lot of chefs use that in, in restaurants today of telling which uh, how how well or how rare uh, the meat is. Um, I want to talk about the Black Hand or the Mafia. Right. Uh, my uh, my grandfather, uh, being the patron and doing well for himself. The uh, the mafia wanted money. Uh, they wanted to protection. They, protection. They would protect <clears throat> him. I don't know from what. From them, maybe. From them. <laughs> what can I say? And uh, my grandfather refused to pay him. Put a fence up. Had Doberman pinchers, dogs in the fence, and they would they would actually on one case they they bombed the place. My mother was. She from was that young. Point, yeah. And actually, did leave quite a, scars. a psychological scars on your mother. She then ended up having to go to Italy after that with her half brother and raise him in Italy for a while because it got he, so bad. He was uh, her father was so concerned. And uh, and I one time the story goes that uh, the mafia said we want money, and my grandfather says. What, where do you want it? He says, you take it to this place and put it in a garbage can and and uh, and leave. So my grandfather went with what looked like uh, paper money or regular money, 
put it in the garbage can. It wasn't money, but he put it in there. One around the corner, he had the top of the garbage can with him. One around the corner, when the mafia came to pick it up, he went over and he took the, t the garbage can and punched him right in the face. That's the type of guy he was. God bless him. <laughs> and that's why his house got bombed, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> Oh dear, it was a it was a great time, and, and they say when grandfather died that the Italian people uh, took all their gold and melted it down and made a gold cane that he was buried with. Knowing the Italian people, I doubt very very much if that gold cane went into that casket with him. But I don't want to get that morbid. Thing. Well, yes, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> My mother also used to make a. Uh, a soup, a hearty soup, usually in the winter, which is a soup that is a combination of sautéed onions, and uh, and you sauté them, and then you add to the stock, and you add some bread to it, and you let that cook, and you put some cheese over the top, and it's a very, very, very hearty soup. And we have that recipe here for you that I think you would really enjoy, mostly. When, uh, when the weather starts to get a, right. little, a little colder. I, I love soups in, in cool weather. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more about my grandpa. All right. Uh, it was a big family. It was a big family. Five, five sons and, or five daughters and two sons. And uh, all of them went their separate ways. And the families of the Pulsis and the Desaios and the Linguini, Linguinis Linguinis. and Linguinis. the Fabrizis. Uh, did well. They were pilots and lawyers and judges, ex uh, executives for IBM and F and uh, Ford Motor Company. These and are all Jim's cousins. These are all my cousins. Uh, a golf uh, a golf professional, contractors, car dealers, barbers. You name it. They uh, they were there. So I'm very proud of my family and proud of my heritage. And that was that's the reason why we're talking. He has about a cousin that lives in Saratoga that continually is looking up all of this information. <clears throat> and finding it in the Geneva Times, which is what it was called then, and sends these articles. And they're really wonderful to read. And I send them on to our sons because I, that is their heritage also. Right. And it's great that he has done all this research. So we do have a lot of information on the Del Papas. And, I strongly, and I, str I strongly recommend that each of you uh, do that kind of thing. Remember your heritage. It's important. Particularly uh, whether, now it's it Columbus is. Day week and all of that and going to Ellison Island, it's all come to fruition here. Yeah, so I think it's, it's opportune that we did right. it this week. So uh, <coughs> uh, I was excited to, to talk about this and give you some of these recipes. I hope you enjoy. I hope you uh, embrace your heritage. Uh, we're going to do some more recipes from my mother's tattered cookbook. Cookbook, right. Uh, and we're also going to be talking about another Italian family. Uh, we're going to be talking about Marilyn's family. Marilyn is f from Auburn, and her family was in the macaroni business. They owned P&R Macaroni. I'm sure over the past somebody has eaten P&R Macaroni. So we're going to be uh, we're going to be talking about that. Uh, we're in upcoming weeks. Uh, I'm going to try to get uh, the people that are down at the farmers market. They they, uh, ha they sell meats to Schrader's. Uh, which they have out in Romulus. I'm going to try to get them on. This is the last week. This for the is farm. the last week of the farmers market tomorrow. So please go. Yep. And, uh, and you can you know stock up and do some freezing or canning or whatever. Or uh, but I'll miss the farmers market because I love going there and, and getting all the fresh fruits and vegetables. And Cornell Extension, which which is the one that have really promoted this, sent us a listing of. Uh, what they'll be, uh, what what is going to be available down there? I commend the uh, Cornell Extension uh, Cooperative Extension for doing this. This farmers market seems to be getting bigger and bigger every year, and right now they're saying apples, tomatoes, peppers, squash, eggplant, fresh greens, onions, carrots, radishes are all available right now. Plus mums and pumpkins and Indian corn. So you can go get all of your gourds. decorations for so Halloween for or Thanksgiving. Yeah. So go on down there. Take a, your last uh, tomorrow is uh, nine to one usually to one. on Wednesday. Yeah. So enjoy. It was really good talking to you. Uh, I hope you have a and good we'll week. We'll have more stories, Italian heritage stories right. next time. And we will. We'll see you then. Ciao. Ciao.